Today is the fifth Sunday after Easter. We'll be here again in, uh, in, Benita. in the epistle for this fifth Sunday is taken from St. Paul's letter, or rather St. James, chapter 1. Pray, beloved, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If a man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he shall become a man beholding his own countenance in a glass. For he beheld himself and went his way, and presently forgot what manner of man he was. But he that hath looked into the perfect law of liberty, and hath continued therein, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And if any man think himself to be religious, not bridling his tongue, but deceiving his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Religion clean and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in the tribulation, and to keep oneself unspotted from this world. And then the Gospel, take that according to St. John, chapter 16. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, To many men I say unto you, If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in Proverbs. The hour cometh when I will no more speak to you in Proverbs, but will show you plainly of the Father. In that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not to you that I will ask the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came forth out of God, and I came forth from the Father. And I and am come into the world, again I leave the world, and I go to the Father. His disciples say to him, Behold, now thou speakest plainly, and speakest no further a proverb. Now we know that thou knowest all things, and thou needest not that any man should ask thee. For this we believe, that thou camest forth from God. That's what the word to do. Is. So in the last few days before our Lord ascends into heaven, in this mysterious time between Easter and the Ascension, St. Jerome and St. Augustine tells us our Lord was very busy during this time. And he was doing the work of preparing his apostles for the great battle that has come ahead. And here are the considerations of one very important part of that battle. And that is the mystery of consolation. That we, all, so we often know that we go into great battles, we experience great tribulations and great trials. Blessed is just man who could have sinned but did not. And we have many tribulations and many sorrows. But God made us human beings in such a way, we are defined as a rational animal or a political animal. Our rationality, the rationality is we have reason. And the reason knows the truth, and once it knows it, it knows it. And this we have in common with the angels. But we are also animals. We also have bodies. And the mystery of our body is, the body knows it's hungry on Monday, and it eats. On Tuesday it discovers that it's hungry again, and it eats. And on Wednesday it discovers it's hungry again, and it eats. We discover we're tired again on Saturday, and we sleep. We're tired again on Wednesday, and we sleep. And we know that we must sleep to cover tiredness, we must eat to cover hunger, and so on. But the fact is that our minds are connected to our bodies. And so there's something about our minds that has something animalistic in them. Unlike the angels, when the angels decide, I am going to follow Christ, I am going to follow God, they decide, two-thirds of the angels said, we will follow Micaiah, we will follow him, that is going to stand, who says, who is like unto God? And we will fight on the side of God. And they have made a decision. And when they make that decision, it's done. It's finished. And they can never change their minds. Because they've used their reason and they made one choice, the truth. So likewise, the wicked devils, the wicked angels, they decided, I will follow Lucifer. I will not follow Christ. I will not follow Mikael. And so one third of the angels said, we will not follow Mikael. We will follow Lucifer, the wise and top of all the angels. And there was a war. And not one of those who decided for Satan ever changed his mind. And not one of those who decided for God ever changed his mind. And that's the way it is with the angels. 
But God made us human beings. He made us to renew our choice and renew our choice and renew our choice and renew our choice. So there's something somehow more beautiful about our choices and the choices of the angels. The angels have to choose God once and they make a perfect choice and they never go back. But human beings, we choose God and on the next day we must choose God and the next day we must choose God. Now the weak side, of course, is that today I might choose God, but tomorrow maybe I'll change my mind and follow the devil. And on the flip side, there are many souls today that have chosen Satan and chosen the devil, and they right now choose the devil, but tomorrow they might change their minds and choose, choose God. But what about those, like the great saints, or those that have finally turned away from sin, and they have chosen God, and they will stay with God until the day they die. This is what is supposed to be the case for all of us. Must we repeat the choice? It just so happens, it, it don't work. It just so happens that God made us in such a way that we repeat the choice, and we have to repeat the choice, and we have to repeat the choice, and we have to repeat the choice. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the fathers tell us, he went from city to city. City to city to city to city, and he would travel with his twelve apostles to each city. And each place he taught the same the kingdom of God has come amongst you. The kingdom of God has come amongst you. The kingdom of God has come amongst you. And he has to repeat and repeat and repeat. And our Lord made us that way that we need to repeat. In a good marriage, the husband reminds the wife daily that he loves her, and the wife reminds the husband daily that she loves him. And the Lord Jesus Christ made us to say each day our morning prayers, each day our night prayers, each day to talk to God. But there's something about we human beings that we must renew and renew and renew our communication with God. God knows how we are. And he told us we'll have to suffer a bit, we'll have to struggle a bit, we'll have to have some difficulties, but we must not be worried about those difficulties. There will be, <coughs> be struggles. <coughs> what is God going to do, though? <coughs> he will revisit us. He will revisit us. He will revisit us. Remember on one Easter Sunday, he said to St. Mary Magdalene, Noli me tangere, you cannot touch me now. She was so happy that Christ was risen from the dead, and she went to embrace him. You cannot touch me. But he will, but instead, of, but it turns out that he's not telling the truth. Because he is touching her at that very moment. And he will revisit her in the Holy Eucharist. He will revisit her in visions. She will have daily visions of Christ. She will, she will daily levitate in the sky in her contemplation of our Lord for the remainder of her days. That she will be filled with great contemplation. She will do penance with her body, but she will contemplate heaven with her soul. And she will have the most beautiful contemplative soul that God ever made, that of Mary Magdalene. She sat at the feet of our Lord for only a few hours during his three and a half years on this earth. But when he went into heaven, she sat in front of his feet for countless hours. And we must understand, right now we're entering into one of the crises of the church. One of the crises of the world. A crisis of our church is now under persecution in a visible way. It is now becoming dangerous to be a Catholic, dangerous to know, love, and serve God. It's becoming illegal. They've made it illegal many times in the past, and they're going to try to make it illegal again. Well, they're making it illegal again. This has been happening to all our ancestors, and we're heading towards tribulations. But consider our Lord Jesus Christ. He was three hours suffering in the garden. Three hours in the garden of paradise in great suffering. And at the end of those three hours, the angels ministered to him. Then he was captured. Then he was. Then he was captured by the by the uh, the mob. And then what happened with the mob? Right? He was captured by the mob. And then, as he was dragged down into the streets, dragged down into the town, what happened? He with the, the Mary and Saint Veronica showed up. And then, when you go through the crucifixion, Veronica arrives. He sees his holy mother during the course of the Passion. And what else happens during that Passion? The St. John, though he is weak, will stand at the foot of the cross with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so there will be various... And the, 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 the St. Simon the Serenian will carry the cross behind our Lord. And later in that day, so that the, 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 the rich man, Joseph of Arimathea, and the Pharisee and Sadducee, Nicodemus, 
Nicodemus, the Pharisee, is going to call for the burial of Christ. And so what is happening? There will be one that even though we're going through tribulations, Christ allows there to be little respites. He allows there to be little returns and little gifts. And then our Lord is getting ready to go into heaven. He said to his apostles, Hitherto you have not asked anything in my name, but once I go to heaven, I told you that I'm going to come back. But when does Christ come back? We know that he's coming back at the end of the world to judge the living and the dead. But he comes back many times between now and the time of the judgment, and he comes back when he's called. He comes back when he is called. When he is called down, he comes down. When he is called back, he comes back. And so we have here that many times we call upon our Lord. There's going to be struggles in the spiritual life. There's going to be struggles in the battle. Jonas cried inside the belly of the whale, and the Lord heard his prayer. And what happened? He was brought back to the sea of to Israel, and he was given the opportunity to fix the problem. He had disobeyed God, ran away from him. He was given the opportunity to obey God and preach to the Ninevites. And so it's happened over and over again. God will always give us opportunities to repent, and he will always give us comfort throughout the battle. When we look at our battlefield, we say we suffer very much. We are attacked very much. But go back and look at it honestly. In our greatest tribulations, Christ is always coming down. Christ is always coming to help. Christ is always visiting. He will come again to judge living and the dead in power and majesty. But between Ascension Thursday and his return on the day of judgment at the end of the world, he visits with his mercy. He visits with hearing our prayers. And he said to his apostles, Ask, ask anything in my name, and I will return. He appears to the saints. He is in the Blessed Sacrament. He is in, the, is in our, our soul and dwelling in the sanctifying grace. He's hearing our prayers, and he's revisiting and revisiting and revisiting. He allows us to suffer. One reason why he allows us to have tribulations is to remind us to call upon him. And when we call upon him, he will come down and hear our prayers. Each of the crises of the church, we're one of the crises right now. But he already told us in advance about this crisis, just like he told us about the other crises. There is going to be a great loss of faith. There is going to be a great exodus from the church. There is going to be a great tribulation. And then there will be a great victory of Mary. So we are getting close to that victory. And in the battle, what does he do? He lets us suffer a little. He lets us have some tears. But then he gives us consolation. One day, St. Thomas the Apostle, who had converted so many places in India, he went to one village... And they would not repent in the south part of Kerala. They wouldn't repent. And finally, he was so discouraged, he went to the top of the mountain, and he took a little cross of bamboo, and he put it in the ground. The cross turned into gold, and the golden cross grew, and the golden cross is still there to this day, 2,000 years later. When he saw the cross turn into gold, he realized, that now if I go back down into that city and the village, they will repent. And now the people still make pilgrimages up to that cross to kneel in front of it and to ask for their prayers to be heard. But when did that cross turn into gold? It turned into gold when St. Thomas was weeping. It turned into gold when St. Thomas had a hard day. When St. Thomas had to go into the mountain himself alone, he remembered how our Lord would go into the night and pray and went into the mountain himself alone. And there he was preaching the bottom of the mountain and they weren't listening to him. And they weren't responding to his miracles. And they didn't want to return to God. And he had two choices. One choice, our Lord said... When the people will not hear you, wipe the dust off your feet and go to another city. But if you wipe the dust off his feet, these people would be damned. And he did not want them to be damned. And so he went to the top of the mountain and he wept. And when Thomas wept, he made a little cross of bamboo and put it in the ground. And that cross turned into gold. And that cross is still there 2,000 years later. You can visit that cross of St. Thomas. It is quite large now and the golden cross is still there. Because St. Thomas wept in that place. And so that the, and then his weeping was turned into a great consolation. And what about St. James? James was James did wipe the feet off, wipe the dust off his feet. And James said, I am leaving Spain. I only have seven young men. These seven men are going to become Catholics. The rest have not become Catholics. So I'm going with my seven men and we're leaving Spain. And as he left in, in frustration, as he left with a feeling of failure. He passed by Saragossa, and there the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared on a pillar. 
And the pillar is still there, that beautiful pillar of rose marble. It is still there. When did the rose marble come? Where did the rose marble come? That we are able to kiss 2,000 years later. That we are able to touch 2,000 years later. It came from James's tears. And the cross in Mindia came from Thomas's tears. And our Lord Jesus Christ often saves his greatest gifts, his greatest gifts, his greatest consolations, his greatest strengthening of our souls for the time of tears. And hence the desolation. And what is the greatest of all desolations? It is the cross itself. Our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified when all turned against him, his own apostles turned against him. And what is the holiest place on earth? That place of the cross. What is the holiest and most wonderful of all relics? The relic of the holy cross. Where did all happiness come from? From that cross. And hence, we will look at the end of the world, how there are many sorrows in our lives, many tears, and many desolations, and many times of weeping. And when we weep with Christ's love in our hearts, and when we weep with the faith, what happens? Somehow that weeping turns into joy. And Lord Jesus Christ and said to his apostles, I am going to leave, and it's necessary for you that I go. But I'm going to return. And when I return, you shall have joy. When I leave, you'll have sorrow. But when he returns, what was the state of the apostles? It was a state of weeping. It was a state of fear. It was a state of sorrow. But they were in fear and weeping and sorrow with the love of God in their hearts. And Christ came and turned their sorrow into joy. And this is to be reminded of all of us that we will have to experience some sorrows in our lives, some challenges, some difficulties, but they will all be turned into joy. For all things are unto good to those that are of the household of the faith. Therefore, let us remain of the household of the faith. Let us not be discouraged by the difficulties and troubles of our life, which is one of them is mass being a few hours late. And all the challenges that may come, let us not be disturbed by those things. And every single one of them is a gift. And God will turn sorrows into joy time and time again. So in any case, we have confidence in this. And remember, in the next three days, rogation days, you pray the of the saints if you can. Uh, we have, we're seeking the litany in the next three days, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and praying for our, our Lord to give us our material needs. Not only our spiritual needs, but our material needs, because if, if we have bread, it's only from God. It's not from the government. If we're going to survive, it's from God, and we must be reminded to pray to God for our daily bread, for our daily food, for the roof of our heads, for the things we need to survive, that all things come from God, spiritual and also material. And all things are a gift from Him. And so let's pray to Him to take care of us during the time of difficulties and tribulation, and have confidence that He shall take care of us, as so long as we know, love, and serve Him. And then when the tribulations come in our lives of the various sorts, keep the faith strong in the heart. Don't turn away from our faith. Don't compromise in our faith. And God will take the desolations. He will take the struggles and turn them into crosses of gold and turn them into great constellations and pillars of beautiful marble. And He will transform our lives and our sorrows into the greatest of joys. And remember on Easter Sunday, what were those women doing? They were going to a grave. Why were they going there? Because of the great sorrow in their hearts, because the one whom they loved was dead and gone. And when they arrived at the grave, they met an angel, and the angel said, look at the place where they laid him. He is risen. He isn't here. He is going to meet his apostles. And you must have great joy in your heart, because you are the first ones to come to the place. Those holy women were the first ones. Just like to 4,000 years before, it was a woman that was the first one to go to the tree to speak to a devil about a forbidden fruit. So on the day of the resurrection, it was a woman who was the first one to go to the tomb. And those holy women, they cured the poor mistake of Eve. They took away the shame of Eve. When Eve went to visit a tree and talked to an angel, and then she went back and deceived man. These holy women with tears in their hearts went. They didn't know they were going to find an angel, but they found him. And these are the most wonderful women in the world. These women that went with Mary Magdalene to that tomb. And then they saw the angel. And the angel said, now go and tell the men. 4,000 years ago, your grandmother went and told the man and everything went bad. Now you go and tell the men. And you will see them become saints, and you will see them become apostles, and you will see them transform the world. Go and tell the men. 
Well, women are famous for gossip anyway, so start gossiping. And that is their duty. And they went. And their, their words saved the world. And their words, they came with tears. And that day of their greatest tears was the greatest consolation. And they went and spoke to the apostles and helped to transform them. And they went to the city and they helped to transform it. And so the tears of the apostles also were turned into joy. And the tears of the holy women and the tears of the most blessed mother of God were turned into joy. And so it shall be with our tears if only we make sure that in the time of tribulation continue to know, continue to love, continue to serve, and very soon Christ will come and console us in our most tragic desolations. They'll be turned into the most wonderful joys that that joy no man shall ever take from us, as our Master once told us and remains always true. We're going to close that and God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.